watching East Tennessee's first and only year-round sports talk show on television. This is the Sports Source with your host, John Pennington. Good Sunday morning and welcome into the Sports Source. Happy to have you with us. Incredible week for Tennessee. They go 2-0 in basketball this week. If you watched last week's show, you know we all predicted that. Uh, in reverse. <laughs> uh, incredible. We'll talk about the Tennessee basketball run. We've got uh, football coming up, recruiting. Also, a very interesting uh, topic. Could an NCAA investigation into another school actually turn out to be a positive precedent for Donnie Tindall and the NCAA case that he could be facing? We'll discuss that a little later in the show. It's going to be interesting. Let's start with this first segment. Always brought to you by the folks at Phil Cobble Fine Homes and Land. And trust me, if you are wanting to move your home before spring, before the thaw, give Phil Cobble's team a phone call. They have been Knoxville's leading realtor since 1980, specializing in properties in Farragut, North Shore, Chodo, uh, Hardin Valley, plus Loudoun and Blount counties. You see the map right there. They're all over East Tennessee, but right there, that's the, that's the home runs. That's the strike zone right there. Uh, Phil Cobble, find homes and land. If you're looking for a home or if you're wanting to list your home, do it with a company that has all the tentacles out there to promote your home that you want sold, including shows like this. I'd just like to have your show, your home, shown right here on the Sports Source. Phil Cobble, Fine Homes and Land. All right, now, these are the headlines I was babbling about in the open. Tennessee on a heck of a roll in basketball right now. Three and one in the SEC, two road wins already in the conference. The NCAA possible hope that I talked about with the investigation, we'll discuss that. Uh, we'll talk about Peyton Manning's future. That's been a hot topic all week. We'll discuss and break down some numbers. Tennessee's tournament resume. Did not expect to be talking about that in January. Uh, we will, though, and the resume is actually looking pretty good. Uh, we'll talk Tennessee recruiting. We'll have uh, a little comment on the college football playoff. Who's the better coach, Nick Saban or Urban Meyer? Uh, the Power Five conferences are now going to be paying players a little bit. We'll get into all of that on the Sports Source today. And we're going to start with this panel right here. Mark Pankratz, former Vol staff member, Houston Fancher, former Vol staff member, former head coach at Appalachian State. And these two, by the way, you can find, I finally remembered, <laughs> you can find their podcast, sportsanimal99.com, and it is called Coach's Corner. That's right. Just go there and look for that. It's a fantastic podcast, great guests, great info, great details. Next to them, works for Sports Radio WNML. Jimmy Himes down there from uh, Sports Talk, Monday through Friday on 99.1 and 9.90. And right down there from Tennessee Golf Central and a million other publications, Charles Demetrius Cavalier is the third. You know him as Chuck. All right, guys, and just as we said, 2-0. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. The Vols uh, have about 25 scoreless minutes combined against Mississippi State and Alabama, their previous two games. Then they come out and knock off number 14, Arkansas. Then they go on the road and win another road game at Missouri, a team that had a lot to play for because they'd gone to Kentucky and gotten bombed. They were playing for pride. Didn't matter. Let's start with you two very quick, very quickly, very briefly on this week and the wins, and then I want to get into how the heck are they doing this. So let's start with Missouri last night. The key to me, I thought, and Mike Strange wrote about it in the Sentinel today, the team had every reason to fold. At the end of the game, Missouri makes its run. Tennessee isn't a great scoring team. They don't fold. How are they doing this? Well, I think it was the support staff. You know, this wasn't, or the, the support players, this wasn't a Josh Richardson show that we've seen night in and night out throughout the season thus far. You had Armani Moore with a big performance. Mm -hmm. Punter showed up. Derek Reese made big play after big play. They attacked the rim, attacked the paint, and that was the difference maker because we were able to score points outside of Josh Richardson. You know, the key thing is you look and he talked about Josh is the fact that Josh, our two road games, hadn't played especially well at Mississippi State and at Missouri, but the other guys have really come through for us, and I think that's a critical thing to talk about. And it, once again, it falls back to style of play, and we've stuck with the way we want to play, how we're pressing, how we're zoning, how we're defending. Our defense is a constant every night, and it was, and it played out for us down the stretch against Missouri. Well, and, and Mark talked about the complimentary players. How about Hubs? Uh, he's a guy that has struggled at times. The other, he had a game recently where he had 30-something minutes with no steals, no assists, no rebounds. He had eight rebounds. Every little thing with this team helps, in particular when Josh Richardson doesn't have a really good game. I didn't think they could go on the road with him playing, scoring in single digits and win, but they were able to do it. And Moore had a big game, and, and, and I just think there were other pieces to that puzzle 
that helped Tennessee get that win. Yeah, and, and Richardson even had, what, two huge blocks on oh, plays that, that block. really, to me, were an inspiration to the whole team. And it's 42-42, and you think Tennessee, if you're going to fold, that's kind of the place you're going to. They're gaining confidence. That's what I see yep. in this group. They believe in the way they're playing. And they've got a coach that coaches them. He's coaching every single play out there. One thing we looked at when he was hired, Mark, when we did our show where it was just numbers upon numbers, looking at Donnie Tindall's eight years as a head coach, what we found was when his teams were tall, small, didn't matter, they always rebounded well, which if nothing else, that shows you the effort that he coaxes out of these guys. And I think when you look at this roster, and let's not, you know, the kids are out there doing the, the playing on the floor, so you got to credit those guys. But at the same time, there's not a true point guard. There aren't a lot of true scorers. There's no true real – big man inside, and yet they're 11-5 and five at this point, 3-1 and one in the SEC. Uh, how much of this goes to the players and how much of this goes to Donnie Tindall just getting the absolute max out of them? Well, I think you, you start with, you know, it's all about the Jimmys and the Joes, not the X's and O's. But with this team in this situation, you know, and the limited roster, you're only yep. having nine guys, uh, the lack of interpret, all that stuff. I think Donnie and this staff has done an unbelievable job, and we talked about it. I think he'd be, right now, you know, four games in, he'd be the coach of the year in the SEC. I think, too. Let me, let me say this, as far as the players are concerned, I think they're getting tired of being told they're not good enough, yeah. and yeah. I think that's a motivating factor, too, mm -hmm. because these guys are going out night in and night out and making plays. They're making shots. They're defending like they're told to. So I think a lot of the credit, although Donnie has done a fantastic job by the way they're playing, if we're playing differently, we're not playing as well. But the players have stepped up, and they deserve a major amount of credit to my, in my mind. And Donnie Tindall is not the one telling them they're not good enough. It's everybody else. Right. Because yeah. I'm reading where he sets up a play for Ani, Armani Moore to shoot a three. Now, frankly, I probably wouldn't do that right? because <laughs> he hadn't really hit a whole lot of threes. But he did it, and then Moore hits a three. That engenders confidence in Moore just to go to him to do that. So I think he's got these players playing with probably more confidence than you would think they would have. But I, that's the part where I think he's helped them a lot is that he is he's instilled in them, you can win. I don't mm -hmm. care what anybody else is saying, you can. Okay, is there an occasional hiccup along the way where you score whatever you did in the yeah. second half against Alabama? But in a close game like that, he's got them believing that he can come up with a play to help them win. I think that says a lot. Sure. And, and who would have thought they would have gone on the road at Missouri and hit free throws like that yesterday? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. if you're analyzing this game in, in advance, are you going to predict that as something in Tennessee's favor? No. <laughs> the, the danger of college basketball, uh, at least this is my view, is you ride that roller coaster. I mean, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. You, you have to try and take a big picture approach. And I think until this week, the big picture has been they've done well, but you look at the roster, a sprained ankle here or there could spell doom. It still could. Donnie Tindall said himself after the game, bucket, the bottom could fall out, we could go on 14 the rest of the way. I mean, a year ago at this time, we were talking about how Conzo Martin had, had uh, shanked one into the, into the rough and Tennessee wasn't coming out of it. They wound up a, a bucket away from the Elite Eight. So we need to temper the expectations at this point. But, but the big picture might be changing. I mean, the big picture was they shouldn't be able to do this. You're halfway through the season. Maybe the big picture is this is just a bunch of overachievers. How dangerous is it for us to jump the gun on this one? I, I'll say this. I, don't, I think we're at the point now where we say right now, is it a surprise anymore? You know, is it, exactly. does the narrative change now to where it's no longer a surprise for these guys to win, and now we start expecting them to go on the road and do things or stay at home and do things. And that, there's where the team really determines how much they've matured if we no longer expect them to surprise us every night but to go out and perform every night. Well, well, I'm sorry, Jim. My, my thing is I, I think the expectation is we know this team is a great defensive team. The other thing is are we still going to be able to score? I'm not sold yet that we can night in, night out, get enough points to win a basketball game. Yeah. And then, but the other thing that's exciting about it is – the league is what it is right now. There are a lot of outside your top two, top three teams, and we've already beat one of them. There's a lot of teams that are all on that level playing field. And if you can continue to get stepped up performances by those guys outside of Josh, you're going to have a chance to win basketball games. Last well, word, Jimmy. The surprise that I see would be this. I wouldn't be surprised on a given night to see Tennessee beat somebody. The consistency. Mm -hmm. That would be the surprise to me. Can they continue to do that? Maybe they will. Uh, with a shortened roster, without that inside presence, it's like Mark was talking about. We've seen it before with Mississippi State and Alabama. They've had these 12 to 13 minute droughts. If they, but if they can consistently play at a higher level, that's the part that would surprise me. But on a given night, 
I think they could beat just about anybody in this league. All right, Chuck, I'll give you, you 10 seconds to say it. I think anything. it's just like Donnie Tindall said. It's not pretty to watch, but it <laughs> seems to be working. All right. Well, when we come back, we'll talk about Donnie Tindall. Interesting thing happened this week, in case you haven't been paying attention. Uh, SMU got a letter of allegations. There are some connections to the Tindall case. We'll discuss and debate whether or not this could, if things work out for SMU, it could set a precedent for Tennessee. Come on back on the Sports Source. Decks, dens, homes. Turn to Benedict Construction. 